gives it up to Young. And the Panther contingent rises to its feet. For Georgetown, four trips, four turnovers early on. And that's for this pit team without Aaron Gray. Again, more athletic. They will get out and run. And Sam Young is a guy who can finish at the rim. That's Summers. And the foul committed by Hibbert. John Cowell has it over the back. He's going to look at the jump out. That's been very successful. Kendall able to get out and do that. And uh, LeVance Fields does a nice job running the break. And Sam Young, he got extended minutes against Seton Hall. Had a few highlight dunks in that game as well. These two teams have won more road games in their conference than any of the so-called BCS conference teams, major conference teams in those six leagues. So neither team feels that winning on the road is that difficult at a time when in college basketball it really truly is. Difficult. Well, that's why you build a championship resume because, uh, by matter of fact, you have to win in a neutral site to win the championship and in the tournament, and, and you build a great regular season record on the road. Hibbert goes with a jump hook in the lane. First bucket for the Hoyas, three and a half minutes deep. Pitt really packing it in, but I think Georgetown has to find a way to get Hibbert touches. He shoots 70% from the floor. He's too efficient inside to overlook. Graves a runner. Young on the offensive boards. And see, and see, that wasn't a block, Tim, but he <laughs> he knew that Hibbert was in there and he forced him to pass it out. Cook blows by in baseline, goes reversal. What a move by Cook. Junior from Philadelphia and transfer from East Carolina. Really pressed in a home game coming back to Philly against Villanova and has struggled since, but uh, that time he got Hubbard, Hibbert out on the floor and was able to go around him off the dribble. who's been so steady for John Thompson the third gives it up and the triple finally falls first three-pointer for Green who has been lights out the junior from Hyattsville Maryland making a real case for Big East player of the year uh, he's, he's, his numbers wouldn't indicate to him you look at him but I, I think he may be the best player in the conference uh, he is a special kind of talent well let's face it in John Thompson's system no one is going to have huge numbers that's the way they play Graves picks up the player control foul. It will be Georgetown's basketball when we return. Oh, show me on the reversal. Nice move by Graves. Tim Brando, Mike Jeminski, happy to have you with us. Pittsburgh up by one, and uh, quite frankly, Mike, if you look at the standings, the winner of this game has the inside track for the regular season crown, and at a time when it seemingly is always about who's in and who's out, winning a conference championship still means a lot to the players and especially the coaches. I think it gets overlooked. The conference championship gets overlooked. The, the conference tournament gets overlooked, but certainly these two uh, right in the driver's seat. Tim, you look at the other big game in conference today is Marquette at Notre Dame. Uh, the winner there gets a leg up on the bye in the yep. first round of the Big East tournament. Jonathan Wallace joined in the backcourt. Jesse Sapp. The Hoyas Took three and a half minutes to get on the board. They turned it over the first four possessions of this game. As a result of that, Pitt five more field goal attempts. There's another steal. Right on cue, Sam Young. All the way to the rack. And the foul committed by Green. Well, John Thompson, the third. This is very uncharacteristic for his club. And this is just good, solid defense. Young staying right in front. Picks Green's Ooh. pocket at half court. And there's no way the defense can get back. Pitt playing very, very well, especially out front defensively. That's where most of the turnovers are occurring. Eight trips, five turnovers now for John Thompson's team. Young at the line. There are no guarantees in Survivor, but this much we can promise. This Thursday, one person will drop out, one person will freak out. And winning immunity could send you home. Don't put you up, the game has ever seen. New Survivor Fiji, Thursday on CBS. Gray has made his way onto the floor for the first time. We talk about candidates for player of the year. He is that. And I'd have thought, Tim, with, with the ankle injury, they might have started him just to keep that warm coming off of pre-season pre warm-ups. Another Georgetown turnover. Keith Benjamin 
comes away with the unforced error by the Hoyas. But I watched Gray in, in warm-ups and looked fine. Ramon. Boy, I tell you, Ronald Ramon, the junior from the Bronx, all hollows into the fray and gets the deuce early. He's an instant offense kind of guy off the bench for Jamie Dixon, especially from behind the arc. He can light up in a hurry. Sapp running that backdoor cut, quickly doubled on the baseline. Summers fouled by Levance Fields. It's interesting when you think of Fields and what he means to his team, Mike. When Carl Krauser was playing here, he was a true leader, a tough kid. So was Fields. But this is a Pittsburgh team that, from a team standpoint, turns the ball over less now than it, than it did when Krauser was on this club. Brian, the thing, when you look at Jamie Dixon, he's had good passing big men uh, throughout his tenure at Pitt. And Gray very good in the post. Kendall very good at the power forward position. And this team really shares the ball. And you could say that of both of these clubs, yeah. uh, except for the early blip here. Georgetown is a very good ball handling team. And again, no disrespect to, to Krauser. It just seemed that the ball stayed in his hands a bit longer when he was operating at the well, point. Fields has a little bit of that in him. He can be aggressive, but certainly not to the extent that Krauser was. Krauser was a scoring guard who created opportunities off of his aggressiveness. Benjamin needs help and gets it from Ramon. There he is again for three. Gray keeps it alive on the offensive glass. So his impact uh, felt early. And that's the thing against a shot blocker. You have opportunities to offensive rebound. Hibbert will roam inside, and, and Gray can get good position. Expect a grinder today. These two teams are very tough and will force you to play through the shot clock on many possessions, and we're down to five now. Fields, a pull-up. The iron unkind, pulled down by Biggs. A third try coming for the Panthers. Gray rejected. Summers came over to give help. And then the follow. Nice work by Tyrell Biggs, the sophomore from just outside New York City, Emanuel, Don Bosco Prep. You can see Gray, not the explosiveness there on that finish, but because he occupied two players, Biggs was able to get to the offensive glass. Biggs cover that backdoor cut by Green. Man, off the ball. This is fun to watch. Gray picks up the foul against Hibbard. These two teams know a lot about one another. Well, here's the look, and you see, and for a right-handed player, jumping off that left ankle is critical, and that's where you don't get the lift, but they do get the offensive rebound. And the place where an injury really manifests itself, Tim, is on the defensive end where you have to react to a player. You can't choreograph your moves. Hibbert gets his first blow. Patrick Ewing Jr. into the game. Number 33. Rebound and outlet to Benjamin. Fields got it to him. Ewing gets the rebound. Pretty good recovery and transition defense. That's the one thing John Thompson talked about yesterday, not letting them get any cheap baskets out on the run. Ewing's getting a lot more minutes. A very emotional player. Tries to take the ball away. Did. He turned it over. There's some of that emotion I was talking about. We had the occasion to see his dad last night. He was having dinner with his son at a nearby restaurant, and uh, he's really pumped up about having the opportunity to see his, uh, his well, kid play. And he, he felt like this was a good move to transfer from Indiana to Georgetown. His son, hey, that's talk about carrying a burden, uh, wearing your dad's number, and that being Patrick Ewing. But he said he's, he's been Patrick Ewing's son his whole life, and he's very comfortable in his own skin. On the wing, Biggs not there. Long rebound to Sapp. Again, he makes that move and feels trying to induce the player control foul. Picks up the block. Jesse Sapp very capable of running the break. Second foul on Fields as Sapp takes it to the rack. Timeout. CBS Sports College Basketball coverage is sponsored by Gatorade, Thirst Quencher. Gatorade, is it in you? Michelob Light, a classic all-malt lager brewed with the finest European hops. Try the taste. And by State Farm. Great service, great rates. It's all here. Nobody takes care of you like State Farm. 
What is that old story of familiarity breeds contempt? G-Man, we've got a lot of familiar faces at this afternoon's game and connections, and certainly Aaron Gray, uh, you know, of course, his, uh, his uncle was a teammate of yours, and his, his dad and mom are here. Steve played with you at, um, at Duke. And uh, in, in attendance, well, along with uh, Kenny Denard as well. And uh, but then, you know, you look at uh, John Thompson III, and of course his father casts a very large shadow around here. But I think in their case, familiarity breeds wins. <laughs> yes, it does. I asked him, you know, he does a radio show here locally, and I asked uh, Big John, I said, uh, what was it like being at practice yesterday? Because we were, and he said, oh, it, it prepares me for my radio show. I use it as show prep. There's a great sense of pride, though. You can really see it. And uh, Pete Carrill, is, as we said earlier, is here today as well. Turnover this time, and Summers will get the jam. A return to Cinder by the Hoyas. All the turnovers in this game tonight have been live ball turnovers. It means it gives you an opportunity to score down the other end. Tied at 11. Ramon now operating at the point with Benjamin on the floor. Biggs, Gray. And Cook well, it shows you the versatility of Patrick Ewing, too. He is guarding Gray and doing a good job of fighting from behind, getting fronts, and trying to keep the ball out of his hands. His versatility on the defensive end is his greatest attribute. That's a walk on the ball fake by Cook. And so many times, uh, front-line players that get the ball out front and try to put the ball on the floor open themselves up to travels, and you're, you're right out in front that everybody can see it, especially the referees. Jonathan Wallace has been replaced by Jeremiah Rivers, son of Glenn Doc Rivers, currently coaching in Boston. And uh, he's been seeing a lot more playing time. They lost Mark Eggerson earlier this year, who got a lot of playing time. So players like Crawford and Rivers have seen much more playing time. Ewing gets the high pick from Green and gives it up. And the free ball by DeWan Summers, the freshman from McDonough in Baltimore. And the three ball has been kind to Georgetown in this game, and Summers not afraid in that Princeton offense to pull up from behind the arc. He got a good open look. A 7-0 run, and the Hoyas lead it. And the Hoyas are on a roll, and now State Farm presents the drive to 65. Four teams have a longer current winning streak than Georgetown. They are Memphis 16 straight for Calipari's team. Winthrop, what a job they've done in the Big South. Could be a fixture in NCAAs for the future. Ohio State, obviously, you'll see them tomorrow against Wisconsin. And the Bracket Busters from Bucknell. The drive to 65 is presented by State Farm. And look what the last five national champions have done at the end of their season. Well, you look at what the, uh, the, the committee looks at in the last 10 games, how you're playing, and clearly these, those teams really rode a wave all the way to the championship. Longest streak since 84-85. That takes you back to the old heyday of the Big East when little Louie had it going on and Big John donned the sweater in that major matchup at Madison Square Garden. Reach in foul goes against the Hoyas, Patrick Ewing Jr. It's an interesting watching Gray go in and out and Hibbert go in and out. Now Georgetown big out front. Pitt has gone a little bit smaller with Kendall at the five. So Gray getting a seat. Allows them to get a little quicker down low. Cook gives it up to Young. Kendall hits the deck along with Hibbert. And finally a whistle off the ball. Pat Driscoll has the foul. And it will go against the Hoyas. Our officials today, the veteran John Cowell, Pat Driscoll, and Brian O'Connell. Jeff, Jeff Green getting that foul in the hole. Two on him. So Green will be forced to sit. And that brings Dewan Summers back onto the floor. You talk about interchangeable parts. Summers almost exactly the same size and really has the same kind of game as Jeff Green. Georgetown in his own, but Pitt going around the perimeter, not trying to get in to get any sort of penetration. Young puts it on the deck. 
And, and that's where the opening in the zone is, flashing right to that midpoint. That's the soft section. Did not want to take that in-between shot. Decided to get a little closer to the 10. But Pittsburgh has been feasting on the offensive glass. Well, and you have to know that Hippert's back there, too, so that's a risky play. Mid-range jump shot, much better. Coke felt there was contact. The ball deflected. Sapp gives it up to Rivers. Oh, no one came to guard him. Sapp left wide open. Rebound to Benjamin. Keith Benjamin goes crossover with a runner. Does not get it to fall. John Cowell spots a foul. Well, take CBS Sports Line with you wherever you go. It's free. Get live scores, breaking news, and even manage your fantasy team. Text SCORE to 99888. For more, click on mobile at cbssportsline.com. Roy Hibbert picking up his second foul. What's interesting right now, the Pitt has 18 more field goal attempts in this game, and it's because of offensive rebounds and turnovers. Turnovers early, and they've been really giving up a lot of offensive rebounds of late. Young got Hibbert airborne, but he's def rejected by Ewing. The help defense from Patrick Ewing Jr. And he thought he was home free once he had gotten by Hibbert. Talk about throwbacks, which then rejection row early on. Man, I, I got a few of those from his father during my playing days, too. Hibbert from up top. Young clears for Pitt. Had a real flashback there. That wasn't fun. <laughs> <laughs> and the foul committed by Rivers. Trying to check Cook. Here's the thing, you know, you get by the big fella, and boy, Patrick Ewing coming in and cleaning things up. He <laughs> gets shivers. I actually thought he was going to deny the lobby last <laughs> night. <laughs> he wouldn't get out of the foyer last night. Yeah, they probably would have called a foul on me, too. <laughs> Raymond on the wing. Jeremiah Rivers, the rebound, looks to push. Wallace drives. And collects the foul. It'll be a block. Yep. And it goes against Young. Interesting to note, Wallace, a walk-on at Georgetown, was recruited at Princeton by John Thompson and came here, and he's really turned into a very integral part of this team. This is a young man that they've had a great deal of confidence in from the very beginning, even though he did walk on. Heart disease is America's number one killer, but now there are amazing new ways to treat it. Don't miss Matters of the Heart, a special series Monday on the CBS Evening News with Katie Couric. So we talk about the disparity in field goal attempts, but Pitt, while they shot well in the game at home, only 5 of 20 here tonight, so a lot of missed opportunities for the Panthers. They've missed their last eight shots. There's Hibbert. Getting a rest, as is Aaron Gray, who just came back onto the floor replacing Kendall. So we'll see what, if they can find Gray with Ewing checking him. And there's the uh, foul committed by Ewing, trying to go over the back and deny that pass. So a foul against Ewing Jr. But Dewan Summers, the freshman, is having a nice start. Length of the floor and length of the floor. Timeout, Hoyas by five. We welcome you back here to the Verizon Center in Washington, D.C. Tim Brando along with Mike Jaminski. And Mike, what we've seen, as we said earlier, familiarity breeds contempt. And these two defenses are absolutely not allowing the offense to get any fluidity whatsoever. You know, it's interesting, Tim. Both teams very good on offense. They share the ball and are two very good defensive teams. Now, at Pitt, they both shot over 60% with right. Pittsburgh winning that game. But here, Pitt, I think, has left a lot on the floor, on the table. 5 of 20 so far on the road. You can't get that many opportunities and not convert. When you think of John Thompson the third's offense, you immediately think of backdoor cuts. Pittsburgh has not allowed one of those for a basket today. No, they, the Georgetown scoring has come off of three-point shots and getting out on the break and also guys in, in, uh, in the half court being aggressive off the dribble. Pittsburgh's had 11 more shot attempts, but only one field goal made in those 11 shot attempts. They've taken 20 
field goal opportunities only connected on five of them really Georgetown's gotten a break that they have this kind of advantage given the, the way their offense has not been able to to get going and if there's an area where Aaron Gray has struggled is at the free throw line 57 percent the thing you hate to give up though the rebound there Gray it's his first bucket of the game from point blank range. Ankle looking pretty good there. And, yes, uh, but you know, it's, it's much easier to hurt like that to go off of a two foot jump. And Wallace trying to run that backdoor cut feels absolutely in front of him. Macklin, the phenom, stays with it over Gray. He is the most celebrated of the uh, freshman class from Portsmouth by way of Hargrave Military Academy. That's what you have to do with him, with Gray. He did a nice job facing up and making him move laterally. Gray caught that way, and that's what allowed Macklin to get the offensive rebound. He was quicker off the floor. That ball was knocked away by Wallace. And out of bounds to Pittsburgh. You can see there's, a, there's almost a different defensive intensity when Patrick Ewing is out there for Georgetown. He, he's the energizer bunny for this guy. He really gets out. You talked about him playing with emotion. But on the defensive end, that's where he makes his impact with this team. Shot clock at 10. Young for three. Rattles it home right over Macklin. It's a big part of Sam Young's game, but he had a wide open look in the seam. Only a 31% three-point shooter had hit nine coming into today's game on the season. There's the dump down. Loose ball. Finally, the reach in. Opportunity was there for Sam Young. Georgetown controls. Well, what Pitt is doing there now, you talked about them not getting back doors. Pitt's playing a little bit soft, not overplaying and staying between them and the basket. Summers can't connect. Fields. Always looking for that easy bucket, but Georgetown's defensive transition was solid. Graves gets past Rivers, feeds to Gray. Nice job. Antonio Graves set that one up. Penetration that time if you're a big guy along the baseline, just shape up, make yourself a target, and Gray did a super job of that stepping in. Pittsburgh by one. And the contingent from Pittsburgh, let's go Pitt. This game has been sold out for quite some time. They've got a healthy contingent on hand here today. Wallace a runner. Jonathan Wallace from Harvest, Alabama. Trying to go high low. Fields takes the perimeter jumper. And Rivers runs down the rebound for Georgetown. Then we see Rivers now trying to run back door for Macklin. Fields will have none of it. Young tries for the steal against Ewing Jr. Patrick throws up a brick taken out of the air by Summers. Well, he's got a size advantage for Summers that time on the long rebound, able to jump over the top. Summers, that's an offensive foul. Player control against Dewan Summers. Let's take a look at our game summary, talking a little bit earlier about those field goal opportunities for Pitt. They've had many more. The offensive rebounds have also gone to them. It's really a now, Georgetown's got to feel fortunate to be where they are in this game. <laughs> yeah, with a one-point lead, despite yeah, all that. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Timeout. This one is bound to stay close. Right? We'll be back. 432 remaining, Georgetown, Pittsburgh. If you think big picture, Mike, obviously both of these teams would like to have the inside track for the regular season championship, but neither one are the kind of club that you'd like to meet uh, any week of the NCAA tournament, particularly the way they play defense. No, they're very good defensively. They're very good with the basketball. They take care of it, and uh, you know you got to think that come tournament time that they are going to be very formidable. Young up high. Uh, Patrick Ewing tapped that one out of uh, Gray's hands, and Sapp comes away with it for Georgetown. 
off the ball. Cook gets involved with Patrick Ewing. You know, when you're playing against the Princeton-style offense, Tim, there are a couple of things you can do. One, you can zone, and obviously Pitt doesn't play a lot of that, although they will mix it up. Or you can play soft and deny those backdoor cuts, which has been very successful for Pitt in this game early. Ewing had a, an, an outstanding effort in the first game with these, with these, these two teams. Rebound to Gray. Now you have Ewing on the floor along with Hibbert. So Georgetown tough inside, you'd think. They try to force it into Gray, but to no avail. Wallace tries to run it down. Winds up on the front row. A lot of effort expended on the defensive end of the floor. Just under four remaining. Uh, all kinds of hustle on this end of the floor. Singular is now the new AT&T. And speaking of uh, AT&T, We've got AT&T at the half coming up. Brent Gumbel back in his big chair at Studio 43, along with uh, Seth Davis. They'll have scores and highlights, plus an AT&T Naismith watch update. That's all coming up on AT&T at the half. And uh, that Texas Tech victory in game one of our triple hitter today and in Lubbock was big for Bob Knight against the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. And really, um, Sean Sutton's team still in search of a significant road victory. The pit falling in love with the jump shot, Tim, and uh, really not attacking the basket inside. That's why they haven't been to the free throw line where Georgetown's outscoring them by five points. I'd like to see the offense. They are collapsing around Gray, but you'd like to see the ball at least go through him. Well, we saw Graves take another perimeter jumper. I think probably that the statistical data that we've shown, there's another deflection. Kendall comes away with it, but they have had more shots, Mike, but they haven't necessarily been the shots Jamie Dixon would like. Uh, even against the zone, I and mean, Gray's kind of an automatic uh, passing area in there. Now there's Ramon who gets the room off of the Gray pass. Much better. You know, you can get the ball, you can throw the ball to Gray anytime you want right there, and he's such a good passer, especially moving the ball to the weak side where you get an open look. Pittsburgh's bench now has 13. Now, again, remember, Gray came off of that bench today, so that skews the stats somewhat. Wallace answers with a big one. He's a guy you have to identify if you're Pittsburgh out on the perimeter. He's a terrific three-point shooter. We were talking last night with Jamie Dixon, and he said probably the area where Gray has improved most is in the uh, assist turnover ratio. Not that he makes outstanding passes, but he's making better decisions in general. Inside, he gets past Hibbert and follows his own shot. Brian, you know, John Thompson yesterday said, we're preparing as if Gray is going yes. to play, and he has showed up to play today. This little up and under move that time. Hibbert, this time Wallace, first backdoor opportunity off the feed from Hibbert. Little give and go that time from big to little that time. Here's that up and under move you were talking about, G-Man. You know what, you just you show the shot blocker what he wants to see, and that's the ball. So two pump fakes and then going up, staying on the offensive glass. But, Tim, you talked about passing and then Hibbert making a nice pass on the other end. The last thing you learn as a big guy is how to pass out of the post. Yeah. And that was just old-fashioned fashion basketball. The, the delivery of the ball into the post and then the cut to the basket. And I like the fact that Hibbert dropped it on the floor. Another thing, and you having been uh, a prolific low post player in your day, you notice when you see the stats on both Hibbert and Gray, how they've evolved, particularly from their sophomore to junior seasons. It's amazing, isn't it? Well, with Gray is the fact that he was playing behind Chris Taft and really had limited time, and that's when he blossomed when he became a starter. And, uh, and Hibbert is just, uh, you know, a, a marvelous talent. It's also a function of him, too, feeling more comfortable. Defensive pressure on the wing leads to a turnover by Ramon. Trying to get the ball to LeVon Kendall. And for the versatility, again, of Ewing. Able not, we saw him get a block in the paint earlier. That time, being able to go out and get pressure on the wing. He can guard at five positions. This looks to be one of those games where a uh, two-possession lead uh, would be huge. Well, and neither of these teams are going to run away and hide. No. They're, they're just not that explosive offensively. Sap off the pick from Hibbert. Hibbert gets the rebound. And off 
with the ball foul spotted. Gray got caught with his forearm against Hibbert. Against this offense, too, the place you're going to pick up fouls is bumping cutters, and that time Hibbert trying to come across the lane. He kicks it back out. He had his, uh, the reach right there. Yep. Got to play with the body. Move your body and try to uh, try to use that as a deterrent. When you stick your arms out, you're going to get called for a foul. Roy Hibbert from Georgetown prep to Georgetown was considered really a, uh, a large curiosity uh, when he came to the Hoyas and now has become just an incredibly gifted low post player. And it really... I believe began for him the national reputation off that performance against Ohio State in the NCAAs in the second round a season ago. Crowd responds as he takes a seat, and Vernon Macklin comes in for it. Uh, well, I'd like to see a rematch with him and Mr. Odin oh. this year. That'd be fun. Would it ever? <laughs> of course, you'll see Mr. Odin tomorrow against the Wisconsin Badgers in our feature matchup here on CBS. Two biggest games of the weekend, arguably, right here. This game and the one tomorrow between Wisconsin and Ohio State. Cook turns it over again on the ball fake. Another uh, example of a wing player getting caught out in front, trying to make too much happen off the dribble. Hibbert checks back in with 122 remaining. You see the turnover story. Georgetown has really gotten off the hook for those early turnovers particularly Pittsburgh did not take advantage Wallace all the way into the lane so that's what you have to do I think with Gray injured make him move on the perimeter Hibbert steps up for the screen and Gray couldn't react to the drive by Wallace Wallace averages just over 11 he's got 10 so far this afternoon in the first half alone forces the whistle and the foul goes against See, Sapp. There's the two-man game and Gray really caught in between. Kendall tries to come over late but Wallace really loves that little five-foot floater in the lane. Made it look easy didn't he? Well I, I love that shot especially when you got bigs back there who are waiting either to block or, or take a charge. Teams that have players that can convert those kind of shots are generally going to last a lot longer in March. Well, the thing, too, Tim, about that shot, you don't take the physical punishment by going in there and getting leveled by a center. Gray and Fields leave the game. Keith Benjamin checks back in. Kendall and Biggs now on the floor for Pittsburgh as well with Ramon at the free throw line. Wallace has uh, last seven points in the last two minutes and 15 seconds of this game for Georgetown. Right, if you're, if you're Jamie Dixon, I think you're happy with the production you've gotten from Aaron Gray, not knowing whether he was going to play. He's, he's been a factor even though he didn't start. Yeah. A number of media outlets had him out for this game completely earlier in the week. Of course, he missed the Seton Hall game. The Pittsburgh uh, had control of, wound up winning by, by three. Sap past Kendall. He's rejected by LeVon Kendall. Ewing, tough pass pass to make. Not much spacing between he and Hibbert there. Right, and then Hibbert was anticipating the shot right now, and so Pittman should get the last shot of the half. Little overpassing by Patrick Ewing that time. But what would, LeVon Kendall is their best team defender, and what a play he made coming and saving a layup. Fields will hold it for one. They tried to get Aaron Gray in for this last play, but he didn't get to the scores table in time. Cook for three. Too strong. And the follow not there. Biggs tried to put it in on the putback. Georgetown, despite the turnovers, lead by three at halftime. We'll send you to Greg Gumbel in New York with AT&T at the half after these messages. You're watching CBS Sports, home of the men's NCAA Basketball Championship. Basketball coverage is sponsored by Sonic. It's not just good, it's Sonic good. Lowe's, for all your home improvement needs, Lowe's, let's build something together. And by the Hartford.
Bedford, official corporate partner of the NCAA. At halftime, the Hoyas nursing a three-point lead. We think so much about uh, the play of Green outside and certainly Hibbert inside, but the one constant has been Jonathan Wallace for the Hoyas. The two bigs have only combined for seven points, and Wallace has really carried them inside. You look at it, uh, done a nice job hitting the lane, and a lot of it's been done off the dribble. All he's done to him has been perfect from the floor. Three of three from the field. There he knocks down his only three, adds four free throws, and this little floater has really hurt the pit, but they've done a lot off of the dribble consequently only four assists for Georgetown at the half as you look at our Hartford playbook first half stats uh, turnovers were an issue early but Georgetown able to hold them off and have the lead at the break this afternoon's game is being brought to you in HD TV by Harris Corporation the world leader in broadcast systems for high-definition television and mobile media Free throw line is what's really kept Georgetown in there, 10 of 11, because they've been aggressive and going inside. And interesting, Gray gets the start at the second half here to try to keep that ankle warm. We mentioned it earlier, particularly with this offense that's uh, not unique to Georgetown, but perhaps the athletes that run it would be considered unique. No backdoor cuts for points in the first half for the Hoyas. Pitt, a very capable defensive team. Hibbert with a jump hook in the lane. From that sweeper, sweeper inside, you could film this in black and white, kind of a throwback <laughs> to the 50s, a, a matchup shaping up inside between Hibbert and Gray. Yeah, that was more of a George Mikan than Patrick Ewing look, wasn't it? <laughs> Gray attracts the double team, looking to give it up. Leads to a turnover. Juan Summers, that's an over and back. Good call by Pat Driscoll right on top of it. Summers left it on the dribble for his guard at just the wrong spot. Well, you've got to give it up earlier than that. If you're just looking for trouble, trying to turn it over at the half. You know, he's trying to get it back to Sapp to bring it up. But that's interesting that uh, Georgetown committed to coming with a big double team on Gray. Young on the wing. Cook trying to keep it alive. Finally pulled down by Green. Pitt getting some decent shots, but unable to hit the little pick and pop that time by Young. He had a nice look at a 15-footer. Hibbert using the baseline for that move, and he taps it in. Boy, what a strong move that was by Hibbert. You know, not a great athlete, Tim, but his footwork is impeccable inside. Well, he faked the sweeping hook and went the other way with it. Gray lost it on the deck, out of bounds to Georgetown. Aaron Gray has been loose with the ball in the last couple of possessions. They've really been attacking him inside, but look at this classic post move. Went with the left-hand hook beforehand and then came back right on the second move. They each set each other up. Fans are booing because uh, they're ruling that a timeout was taken by Gray's Gray's before he turned it over. Good ball. The Hoyas have their largest lead of the game, largest lead for either team. Near the end of today's game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each club to honor their, honor their determination and outstanding play. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund, America's brand supports America's best Chevy and American Revolution. Here's the last sequence. Well, that's a, this is the, the contrary. Did he have, it looked like he had control of it right there now that you have to be in control to be awarded a timeout. He doesn't necessarily have to call it. It probably came from the bench. That's why the fans were reacting the way they were as we went to break. So the ball is still in Pitt's possession, but the shot clock is uh, at 17. There's another steal. Summers. Well, a good effort for Pittsburgh to get back and not give up the layup, but they do have to commit the foul. Well, I think it's the third on Graves, and uh, he and LeVance Fields really have struggled in this game, Tim. They have not given Pitt much in the way uh, of scoring or court time. This is now a 10-2 run for Georgetown from the end of the first to the opening of the second half. And Fields not only has the three fouls, but LeVance... Also, uh, no points in this game. And so that's, a, that's a guy that averages just under 10 a game. Tim Pitt, Pitt had three starters that didn't score. Right. Now, you know, Gray, Aaron Gray is normally a starter, and his points off the bench skew that a little bit, but still, that's a lot of points to make up. 
was looking to call his own number, but to no avail. He says it's a longer and taller group of backcourt players defending fields today. Young in traffic has to give it up. And a quick bump. That's a bit of a bailout foul given up by Jesse Sapp. Well, John Thompson, the third, not at all pleased with that. This play, it was a little tick attack out front, a touch in uh, 10 seconds on the shot clock to really help. I dare say a Raftery nickel dimer in the Big East, huh? <laughs> Fresh shot clock for the Panthers. It's just the, the ball movement has not been very good so far in this half for Pitt. A lot of standing around. Young on the baseline with a leaner. Well, going back to the first half, Pitt had not had a field goal in over five minutes until that deuce. And it's now 33 to 28, Georgetown. And a nice play by the sophomore, too. Under control, using the pump fake, getting the nice balance, able to finish. Green! Oh, what a smooth move that was by Jeff Green. And the foul goes against Aaron Gray. You know, we talked about with Hibbert and Gray and their lack of, or Hibbert and, uh, and Green and their lack of production, but then they only had four field goal attempts between the two of them. Jeff Green is so explosive with the basketball. How good have Green and Hibbert been of late? Well, they've gotten Big East honors as players of the week for three of the last four weeks. The last time that happened, that one school had three of four Big East players of the week in consecutive weeks. You have to go all the way back to 2002-3 when Boston College was in the conference. Troy Bell pulled it off by himself. You know, those two players have been outstanding the last month of the season for Georgetown. And there's the answer by Antonio Graves. After picking up his third foul, he hits his first three. And in transition, getting out and, uh, for a score like that, all, of it, all you need is one shot to open the basket up. Summers not there. Well, they had a mismatch on Hibbert inside and couldn't get the ball to him. They had to settle for a jump shot. Fields air ball picked out of the air by Cook. And he goes reversal. And we're tied at 33. No one will run away today. Well, you see, if, if you're Fields, that was that was a, an assist. That was not an air ball, Jim. I need to correct you on that. Look out, Lorenzo Charles. Here comes another deuce. But you know what? On air balls, it really benefits the offensive player. He's able to go up. The defense is usually afraid to do that. Levon Kendall picks up the foul against Sapp. Four minutes deep. Here in the second half. Jamie Dixon's club uh, falling behind by seven with the largest deficit. And they've answered with a 7 nothing spurt. Green, a pull-up. Loose ball taken down by Levance Fields. Look at Hibbert come out to check him. Cook. Foul, that's a push. Green comes out there to get it. And it's from beyond the arc. That'll be a three-point free throw coming up. Look out. Fields does Wittenberg. And uh, Cook does Lorenzo Charles. We'll be back. Tim Brando, Mike Jeminski, and with apologies to Seth Davis, we, we disagree on West Virginia about the Big East, don't we? Still a little work to do, but, but yeah. probably in, in Louisville, Rick Pitino's team is really coming on well. Edgar Sosa doing a nice job there, but really down in the bottom, uh, Villanova, Syracuse, Providence, Connecticut, I think their hopes are going to really ride on what they do in the Big East tournament. And uh, Syracuse playing uh, the best of that group yeah. right now, that, probably. That lost uh, today at home in Providence by the Friars to Syracuse, a very difficult one. Uh, for them to swallow Tim Welsh's club just uh, hasn't been able to quite get over the hump. Cook gets the first one. And the Georgetown committing the cardinal sin of fouling a three-point shooter. You want to put pressure on a jump shot, but not put him on the line. Monday, Dave's all new with uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, plus stupid human tricks Monday, an all-new late show.
By the way, did you see his show last night? I missed it. Samuel L. Jackson. I was getting rest for the game. Talking about my hometown. He was shooting a movie in, uh, in Shreveport, and he was talking about playing in our golf course, Southern Trace. It was really uh -huh. nice. Did he mention your name? No. Well, how is that possible? But he was talking about my crib, is what I'm saying. <laughs> There's a double team by Graves and Fields on Wallace. Little run and jump going here. Georgetown went up by five. Pete An uh, Pittsburgh answered with an 11-4 run. Georgetown went up by seven, then a seven-nothing spurt by the Panthers. Graves lost it on the way up. Kendall tried to take it right out of the air, but to no avail. You've you got to find a way to get the ball in the hipper right there. He had Kendall on his back. Yeah. You've got to make a delivery somehow. Graves checks out. Ramon comes in. There's the look, the step. I mean, just so big. Kendall undersized. He's caught behind. And, you know, really, delivering the ball to the post is an art, Tim. It's, it's something that should be worked on more by players. Hibbert over Kendall. Cook, nice move that time. He could have lost it, and he tried to rebound it. He simply tapped it to field. But Kendall did a nice job there of forcing Hibbert to be a jump shooter and not letting him get to the rim. Young for three. A big triple. Pittsburgh's run now out to six. 13 to nothing this spurt, and they have their largest lead of the afternoon. Well, Sam Young really developing double figures, three of his last five. He's playing with a lot of confidence offensively. Green, ball fakes, and uses the glass. Count it, and a foul on Kendall. Uh, I talked about Young at the offensive end. He made a mistake defensively right there by biting on the pump fake. Now you put Kendall in a bad situation. He either he, he stays on Hibbert or he comes out there and he was caught in between and it's a three-point opportunity. When leaders uh, of your team take command, you can go on a run. And uh, Jeff Green that time decided it's time for me to take over. Well, and he had been passive early in the season. It has only been over the last 12, 13 games that he's really started to look for a shot. He's been double-figure field goal attempts in those games, so you got to feel he's going to get to that level in the second half. Fields are halfway through the cylinder and out. Cook gets the offensive rebound. Those points from Green, the first in four and a half minutes of action for Georgetown, so he said we've got to stop this run as quickly as we can. Another offensive rebound for Pitt. That was a problem for Georgetown in the first half. And even though Pitt is small, they're batting the ball back out and getting second opportunities. Cook gets Hibbert away from the basket. And then tries to deliver it to Young. And there's a foul. That's a push. Well, Monday on CBS, see why two and a half men is TV's number one comedy. Don't miss an all-new episode of the People's Choice Award winner Monday on CBS, America's number one network. Patrick Ewing Jr. picked up his third foul on that push underneath the basket. Really unnecessary. Steve Cook was really dead along the baseline without his dribble. All you have to do is be tall and make it hard for him to pass out. Teams will not give away the baseline. Kendall on the wing. Nice pass by Levance Fields. And again, just the thought that he might dribble drive allowed that vacuum. Well, playing against the zone, that's a good place to shape up in the short corner. And they moved it from one side to the other, which you make the zone move a little bit, you get opportunities. First bucket of the day for Levon Kendall. And it comes at a very big moment for Pittsburgh. I want to maintain. Neither one of these teams like to come from behind. They're great front runners, but not explosive offensively. Turnover by the Hoyas. Cross court pass. Ramon from downtown. Again, Ewing wreaking havoc with loose ball opportunities. Sap. That's an offensive foul. 
frenetic action, but nothing to show for it either side. A couple of break opportunities. Well, John Thompson the third is just giving John Cal a lot of lift. That's as demonstrative as I've ever seen J JT3. Now you see these teams and what this means for first place, giving it up, and Sapp really tried to make something where there really was nothing. Credit Kendall with getting back, getting the foul. John Thompson the third would have to be considered mild-mannered. That might even be an understatement by comparison to his father in regard to his posture on the bench. Ramon drills another triple. 44-36, largest lead of the day for Pittsburgh. And Ramon has been the one constant from the perimeter for Pitt in this game. And the Pittsburgh bench explodes. 11-49 remaining in D.C. An 18-3 run for Pitt. An eight-point lead for the Panthers. A team that has uh, solidified itself as one of the premier programs in the last three years under Jamie Dixon against the hottest team in Eastern basketball, Georgetown, winners of their last... 10 games. It's the small pit team right now that has forged this lead, and they've done it with defense and three-point shooting. Pitt's made six of their last nine shots. Hibbert with Kendall on his hip. They've got to do that. Oh, they've got to do that. Three-point opportunity. Somehow get Hibbert the ball on the move and let him go to work against Kendall. And LeVon Kendall, the first Panther with four fouls. We'll be right back. CBS Sports College basketball coverage is sponsored by Direct TV. There's good TV, there's better TV, and then there's Direct TV. New Vicks 44 sore throat. Tell your sore throat to just chill. And by Chevrolet, an American revolution. 11-24 remaining, and it's uh, number eight, Pittsburgh, trying to become the fourth team in Big East history to win out on the road and uh, win here at Georgetown, of course, going a long way in, in doing that. And look at the numbers on the past teams that have done that. And they either got to the championship or the final four or won a team. I can say with certainty there's never been a great team that wasn't great on the road. That's uh, that's where you make it. I think that's how a team should be judged by the uh, uh, the committee, the selection committee, what their road record is. And both of these are very tough-minded teams. You look at the top of the Big East Conference, Louisville, and, uh, and, and these two teams, all great road teams. Well, a couple of weeks ago before Patino went on the road for that Louisville Cardinal team and thumped Pittsburgh, uh, you could say they were on the outside looking in. And uh, it's been a real catalyst for Quick Rick and his cards to close out the season yeah. in the Big East. They've been healthy. They're, they're getting production from their pivot, and, and they're making shots. 44-39. Well, you see the run. 18-6. It was 18-3 at one time before Hibbert got the old-fashioned three. Now the Hoyas have a chance to... Uh, Carve into this five-point deficit. Not a good decision by Benjamin carrying it right into the shot blocker. Green. <laughs> How special is Jeff Green? He's just a he's, a he's a tough matchup. If you put a big cover on him, he can do that. Beat you off the dribble. If you go small, he can go into the low post. thing about Green is he lets the game come to him. He, he seemingly never presses it. Maybe sometimes too unselfish. Yeah. Gray wants it. He has Hibbert on his hip. No double team. Good recognition by Gray as he takes it inside. Draws the foul from Hibbert. Take a look at how effortless this looks. Well, it's the behind the back and then the spin move. Uh, it's just, the, you, you can't defend that. No, that's, that's just a great offensive set right there. By the way, Hibbard picking up his third foul. Ramon looks to trigger it in for Pittsburgh. It's interesting. Now, that's like that they, they chose not to double team Gray inside. Now, in an effort to protect him a little bit, Hibbert, they're going to go to his own. There's the dump down. Graves for three. That went over the backboard. It was last touched by Gray. Georgetown's basketball. The 
Wallace has been quiet this half to no, you know, no field goal attempts, no points for him so far after a stellar first 20 minutes. Well, this guy's been quiet. Wallace, after that outstanding first half, he's failed to scratch. Here's Green again. Graves the long rebound. John Wallace has been uh, shut out here in the second half. And uh, as you mentioned, G-Man, that's a, that's a real issue. They've got to get him going. Raymond trying to pierce that double team. Kept his dribble alive. Then looked to get a timeout, and they got it. Smart move. Pittsburgh bench, as soon as he hit the city of his pants, got up and said, we need a timeout. With NCAA March Madness on demand, you can watch live tournament games online outside your viewing area for free. Sign up now before VIP passes run out at NCAAsports.com slash MMOD. That was an instance where uh, they were bit tied up on that possession, but the, the timeout actually came from the bench. Jamie Dixon. Fields from way downtown rattles at home. They had to. The clock was on his back, and uh, maybe that's the shot that gets Mr. Fields involved in yes. this game. Well, both uh, he was uh, shut out early, and it's been John Wallace, the opposing guard, for Georgetown shut out here in the second half. But you really get a feeling that Green wants to take this game over, that he and Hibbert have to begin making plays. Jeremiah Rivers has come in during the timeout. Shot clock under 10. Wallace with the clock winding down. Gray the rebound. Good defensive series that time by Pittsburgh. And the foul on Fields, a very aggressive move by John Wallace, leads to the foul against Fields, his third. Look at that aggression. Really nothing Fields could do. Yeah, I mean, he looked like he was just lost a little concentration in, in, of where Wallace was in the play. LeVon Kendall has four. The only player for either team with four fouls, but a number of players now with three on both sides. Another, we've been singing his praises all game, but the fact he's an 89% free throw shooter, another reason to love him, especially at the end of the game with the ball in his hands. And he also leads the team in three-pointers made. For 48 coming into the day, and been outstanding in different pockets but he's been those are his first points here in the second half but i mean you know great numbers to him but very unassuming out yeah, on the floor he quiet. just does it quietly absolutely graves high arching off the window gray tried for the tip but hibbert got in his way that's the one where you've got to get control of the basketball and then go up just once it appeared that hibbert was going to get away on that cut to the basket. But Pittsburgh smelled it out again. Pittsburgh leads Georgetown by four. Tim Brando, Mike Jaminski, we were talking during the break. This is really a, a scouting reports dream game for coaching staffs because both teams are executing so well on the defensive end, you simply can't run what you want if you're Jamie Dixon or John Thompson well, III. Well, I find it interesting. Both teams are very good defensively. Both teams really run their offense as well. Now, in the game in Pittsburgh, offense was the showcase with both teams shooting over 60%. In this game, defense is at the forefront. And when you think about it, too, once you get into conference tournament play and you begin seeing teams a third time, you really can see how uh, defenses are at the advantage. But it's that time of the year when, as we mentioned, familiarity does breed contempt. Shot clock winding down. 
Green, that's the man you want to have it. Tried to induce the foul, then followed his own shot. He got his man airborne, and that allowed him to put back. Well, Biggs came down. He avoided the foul, but what he wasn't able to do was get the block out on the play. That was just a case of the shooter knowing where the ball was going to miss and getting there first. Raymond had a pick, but fighting through it was Sapp. Shot clock under 10. Gray on the offensive glass, fouled by Hibbert. Tyrell Biggs almost had that one three quarters the way down. It popped out and leads to a fourth foul on Hibbert. That's really a bad break for Georgetown. Had that ball gone through the hoop, Hibbert would not have picked up his fourth. Well, and the other thing, too, is that it came up short. Usually the ball will rebound on the other side of the basket from where it was shot, but uh, Gray was in the perfect position. He has really struggled at the free throw line throughout his career. In fact, Jamie Dixon uh, joked with us last night. He's improved in so many areas. In fact, every area other than here. He said that's one, one place where we really haven't gotten the job done in developing uh, Aaron's game. I think it's, it's more mental than anything with him because he's got a very nice touch. He's got a very good medium range jump shot game. Last touch by the Hoyas. Pittsburgh maintains control. Of the basketball. I think Gray will come out now because Georgetown has gone small. They'll bring Kendall in. LeVon Kendall playing with four fouls himself. Now Hibbard has four for Georgetown. And so he's sitting down. And this is where Pitt went on that little mini run in the second half with this unit on the floor. Yeah, and now with Patrick Ewing Jr. on the floor, loose ball opportunities uh, might go Georgetown's way. They're really trying to find where uh, Ramon is. Cook a pull up. Oh, what, what a hustle that time by Sam Young. He tapped it right out of the hands of Ewing. Second chance opportunities continue to be a problem for Georgetown. The initial defense pretty good. Ramon a triple. And the foul this time over the back by Young. And it goes to the Hoyas. Tomorrow on 60 Minutes, what do you get when Mike Wallace takes on Bill O'Reilly? Two Tigers in the same cage. Plus an all-new Amazing Race All-Stars, followed by new episodes of Without a Trace and Cold Case at a special time. Tomorrow on CBS, America's number one network. Boy Hibbert on the pine with the four fouls. And Georgetown gets to the free throw line with Dewan Summers. And 6-10 left, and Pitt still not shooting free throws in the one and one. The next foul will put him there, but Georgetown making up a lot of points at the line. You count Pitt's misses and then also the disparity in attempts. It's big, been a big advantage for the Hoyas. Strategically, that's one of the most overlooked aspects of the game, isn't it? And team fouls and how you make comebacks in games. Well, especially when you're in that one-in-one -one zone and knocking down the first one. You get that, uh, you miss it, you get an empty possession. Tied at 47. Fields, a silencer. Uh, it's nice hesitation dribble, two-man game with Kendall, and he was able to find a way to the rim. Better than 20,000 here at the Verizon Center in Washington, D.C. Georgetown and Pittsburgh playing for Big East supremacy. Wallace a three. Way off the mark. There's Green on the offensive glass. Remember Kendall playing with four. Green going right at him. You've got to think from the offensive standpoint, with the two centers out of the game, you look at the matchup of Green and Kendall, but Georgetown has the advantage scoring with Green. He's a big-time player. A defensive stop here, and the building will explode. It's at high decibels right now. Foul. And here's him right in the middle of it. 
Patrick Ewing. Talk about him on the perimeter, Tim. Stepping in, doing a great job. That's four on Levance Fields. Levance so Fields getting in and then off the left hand. And then uh, Green, this time doing it with pump fakes, avoiding the foul. And then you see the strength and the ability to finish inside. Levance Fields with his fourth personal, forced to sit with under five remaining. Georgetown shoots for the lead. Ewing bumped. Out of bounds. Belongs to the Hoyas. You see the foul difficulty now. Hibbert and Kendall both with four. Fields now with four as well for Pittsburgh. And a handful with three. Wallace. That time he tried to force it. Uh, normally very solid with the basketball, but uh, got in a bad situation. You never want to leave your feet without an outlet. It's rare when you see either one of these teams experience anxiety on the floor. And that time, Pittsburgh's defense got into the head of John Wallace. Kendall, he likes that wing jumper, but this time short-armed it. Sapp has it, looks for Wallace again. You think this guy wants it? I'd say so. But it's taken down by Kendall. That's what you want to do. You want to make him beat you with his weak hand, and he was forced to go to his left. Graves a runner. Out of bounds to Georgetown. 3.48 remaining. It's a 13-5 Georgetown run after an 18-3 Pittsburgh run. There's a look at our game summary, but Mike, the thing I take away from today in our first game on CBS, you saw two teams working hard to try to make their way into the field of 65. Now we see the grit of two teams that want to win a conference championship. Well, and then want to get primed to get as big as the highest seed as they possibly Absolutely. can. And this game has been played, one, on the defensive end and mostly by the smaller players. The two big centers have been out of this game, especially in the second half. The Bray coming back in right now. We've reached the point in the game when you, you begin to look for the uh, the leaders offensively to take the game over for a period here. I, you got a feeling that this was Jeff Green's moment. But uh, Pittsburgh's defense is so strong in this half. He does have nine points to lead the way. We'll see if he gets a touch here. There he is. Everything funneling through him. Jesse Sapp. Just three-man basketball at its best, and we've seen Green, the ability to score, and then he just threw it over the top of the defense. That was Sapp's first field goal, but Jeff Green's presence was the difference in that sequence. Reach-in foul committed by Dewan Summers. It's number two on him. You see the three-man game, the dribble, and you, if you're a guy, you've got to have your hands up. Uh, Sam Young had his hands in his pockets, and Green went right over the top. Lance Fields back on the floor. And that's the kind of basket, Mike, when you look back at the one by Sapp, that Georgetown generally feasts on, but today they've been difficult to come by. Cook the follow. Gray trying to keep it alive. Graves takes it out of there. Taken away by Wallace. Big turnover. Anytime you throw the ball back out toward half court, you're risking that type of play. Jonathan Ball is coming up big. That last tip by Young, rather than Graves, is what allowed Georgetown to run out. Gray right where he wants it. All right, he just did a great job of backing Patrick Ewing underneath the basket. The huge disparity in weight and strength. Green working on Young. He gets bumped prior to the shot. One and one time. Well, now 
John Thompson is going to counter and bring uh, Hibbert back in to help defend Gray a little bit in the low post. Be interesting to see how these bigs are shuttled in and out, Timmy, as this game unfolds. A lot of uh, offensive or defensive specialized substitution, huh? Yeah, but this, this man in the free throw line is going to have the ball in his hands a lot. Monday, CY Rules of Engagement is TV's number one new comedy. David Spade and Patrick Warburton star Monday on CBS right after Two and a Half Men. Green only had three points in the first half. Jonathan Wallace uh, carried it for Georgetown. Then now he has 10 points here in the second. So he's uh, creeping up on his average just under 14 a game. So many times you'll see guys let their teammates work into the game and then come up big in the second half. Pittsburgh has not lost a conference game on the road. Another steal. Green starts it. Sapp finishes it. Turnovers at the wrong time by Pittsburgh. Lead to two run-out baskets by Georgetown. Georgetown looking for their 11th straight win. The hottest team in hoops in Eastern basketball and arguably the country. This is a, a very difficult team to match up with. I don't care who you are. No, they, 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 you know what? Both teams have shown they can go big, they can go small, they're yeah. versatile, they've got some uh, upper class that they can rely on. Pittsburgh, of course. One constant has been their play on the road in this conference. It's been outstanding, and Gray is fouled underneath. Got to step up for your team and knock these shots down. 57% at the strike. That one was smooth. Well, and, and that's a concern. You, you, you deliver to the guy who's going to the ball is going to run through his hands in offense. And if you're in a situation, you know, if he's going to score, in, you know, if he's going to score inside, you'd much rather put him on the line and give him a layup. Gets one of the two, 57-52. Hoyas by five. Under two minutes remaining. Apparently, we had a techni technical difficulty. We apologize, but we've rectified it at a critical time in this game. Big defensive sequence here for Pittsburgh. Shot clock under 10. Sapp gives it up to Green for three. Out of bounds, last touch by the Hoyas. Pittsburgh will have it. Boy, it, it Pitt continues to defend that offense well. They've got no back doors. They've keep, kept everybody in front, and that was another tough jump shot at the end of the clock. I know this is Jamie Dixon's team, and he deserves a lot of credit for what uh, his principles. But having seen UCLA this year, they're so very similar from a defensive standpoint to the Bruins. Where they just do not allow the wing entry. Cook driving baseline. Gives it up inside the bigs. Not a good idea. And the presence of Hibbert caused that play. Looks like they're going to play straight up here. Now Jamie Dixon does want to foul. Want to foul. He's asking his, his team to foul, but they don't hear him. Now finally Fields does. They wasted about 10 seconds, seconds, maybe 15 there, as he was trying to get their attention. And that's number five on Levance Veal, so he's done for the day. And the first casualty by way of personal fouls. 39.6 left. Who will be the front runner in the Big East? We'll soon find out. 39.6 remaining, Georgetown leading by five. Tim Brando, Mike Jeminski. And Levance deals, apparently we just found out he's uh, still in the game. He does have, uh, well, got a timeout before the foul, we just learned. So a timeout was taken before the foul was given. 
That's a break for Levance Fields. We thought he was done. Now the foul given up by Ramon, which is huge because that means Fields can stay in the game. Well, today's Chevrolet players of the game, Ronald Ramon of uh, Pittsburgh, Jeff Green, Georgetown, in recognition of their determination and outstanding play, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university scholarship fund. America's brand supports America's best, Chevy and American Revolution. Sapp, a 62% free throw shooter. Ewing Jr. comes back into the game. Dewan Summers leaves. Game three, and I'll have big shoes to fill after the first two we've had today. The number three Gators of Florida at LSU. We talked about uh, the uh, winning the, you know, the, the Southeastern Conference. They really took a lot of pride in that accomplishment. Yes, this year. Not doing it last year and winning the title. Well, they went, went 10 and 6 in the SEC last year. Big possession here. Raymond. Young. And on the putback opportunity, he's fouled. Well, Ramon has been the guy to knock down threes in this game. Got a decent shot up, and uh, Young, with his athleticism, beat everybody off the floor. I think it is, uh, John Thompson's got to be upset with that. He's got a bigger team out on the floor, but Pitt just quicker to the basketball. Okay, timeout taken with 25.8 remaining. And Young at the strike. A little more defense will have to be played to be in first place. 58-52 Georgetown by six. Officials are um, looking at some tape. And I'm not sure exactly why. Perhaps to uh, find out the man for whom committed the foul. Who to give credit for the personal two. That's what the issue is about. This was a huge break for Pittsburgh to get this offensive rebound. Uh, it looked like Hibbert on yeah. the play. And, uh, and normally, Tim, you know, you get a long three like that, you get a long rebound as a result of that one right in front of the rim. It brought all the big players into play. They called. It looked like Hibbert, but he's still on the floor, and he had four. I think Jamie Dixon is uh, finding that out. If they credited Green with the foul, that would be his fifth. So either way, it would mean uh, elimination from the game. It, it really didn't look like anybody else was around him. Green was on the back end and did reach in. He's a little disappointed. Hibbard probably astounded that uh, he's still in the game. But at any rate, the fifth foul was on Jeff Green. Stepping up only 64% from the line, but that one looked great. Now, if you're Georgetown on the inbound thing, you got to get the ball to Wallace, 89% shooter or Green, just under 80. Hibbert the rebound. Well, they did not foul right away. Finally, Biggs picks it up. Fields did not want to get a, a fifth, but that's precious time off the clock. We talked about the inside track to the regular season championship. Georgetown doesn't clinch it, but they certainly are in a better position with a victory here today and delivering Pittsburgh their first road loss of the season in the Big East. And Louisville still has a chance. If they tie with Pittsburgh, they would have the, uh, the tiebreaker by beating them at Pitt. Well, the Hoyas, we talked about getting to the line, Mike, in the second half. They've now made 10 of their last 11 free throws, so they've actually gone to the line to get this victory. Yep, and, and that's just the inverse of what happened in the game earlier this year. LSU and Florida to follow. Georgetown by seven. Fields for three. Hibbert the rebound. Quickly fouled. The party's on in Washington. Uh, you know, I, we talked about it. You sense the uh, anticipation about this game, their first sellout here this year. The crowd has been terrific all the way through. <laughs> the
Guys were trying to keep him cool after he was fouled. He said, I got it, I got it, and he certainly did have it. The rebound especially. Well, it was interesting. A lot of the preseason polls don't mean much, but uh, clearly the people in the Big East knew about these two ball clubs. They were picking one and two, Pitt one, Georgetown two, and it certainly has played out that way. This is a league that lost a lot of veteran talent. Some of the younger guys, though, are uh, delivering the goods. 17 players to the, to the next level. 61-53, Ramon from downtown. Fields again for three. Georgetown has the lead in the Big East. 61-53, the Gators and the Tigers are coming up for Mike Jaminski, Tim Brando, so long from Washington. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the men's NCAA Basketball Championship.